Our second day here. Second, Alhamdulillah, second day. Alhamdulillah, second day at full energy. At, uh, <laughs> Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Al-Aqsa. Walking on the street. <laughs> yeah, it's very cold. It's very nice, cool weather. However, so we are on our way to the Al-Aqsa Mosque for our Subo Fajar, Sabah Fajar. Sabah, Sabah, Sabah Fajar. Kira malam Jumaat lah ni Dah pagi Jumaat Baca surah Al-Kafi uh, Sunnah Sepuluh first ten riyad lah hmm. Lepas surat? Tak, sekarang pun boleh Sampai, sampai sebelum masa Pun boleh oh, sebelum masa. Tapi sekarang pun bagus lah Okay, yesterday we went to the Dead Sea and then we went to Makam Ibrahim, we went to the, uh, the Masjid Ibrahim Mosque, and then we went to uh, uh, the, um, the Prophet Musa's Mosque, Makam. Then, one of the three, 
palm of temptation. She yeah. has a very beautiful view. Yeah, so that's it good. And then uh, we went to the Dead Sea. Okay. Okay. And then that's it. Kan ambil gambar kita berdiri sini satu orang ambil gambar. Sungguh nak sungguh. Tahu tak ni kiri? Kasi ni kan ada gambar. Ni ni ni. Omar sorang mau main siapa? وما كنا له مقرنين وإنا إلى ربنا لمنقلبون اللهم إنا نسألك في سفرنا هذا 
البر والتقوى ومن العمل ما ترضى اللهم يسر لنا سفرنا هذا واطوي عنا بعده اللهم أنت الصاحب في السفر والخليفة في المال والأهل والولد اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من وعثاء السفر وكآبة المنظر وسوء المنقلب في المال والأهل والولد اللهم آمين 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 وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم بسم الله توكلنا على الله First of all, I'd like to tell everybody, Jum'a Mubarakah, inshallah, be alameen now. And uh, inshallah, we will go today from here to one of the gates of the old city of Jerusalem. It is called Jaffa Gate. Or we call it the square of Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu. From that gate, he entered Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu, to, uh, to the old city, and he met the priest, that his name is Safronius, uh, nearby the Church of the Holy Sepulchre nearby Masjid Omar today. But Omar Masjid, we will see the facade only because uh, all the mosques uh, uh, nearby Aqsa, Jum'a, they close it. Uh, so as to encourage people to go to pray in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Mubarak. So we will we will uh, uh, see the facade of the Masjid. Uh, uh, the most important thing uh, uh, in our visit to, to that place is uh, remembering uh, what he did, Umar ibn al-Khattab at that uh, area, and what he wrote uh, at that time, uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab uh, in Jerusalem regarding to uh, the Christian they were living here uh, in Jerusalem, that he was uh, like like the king of the city, Umar ibn al-Khattab Without fighting, he came, uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab, to Elia uh, Capitolina, to Jerusalem. So we will uh, uh, visit, inshallah, and we will talk about it, inshallah, and then we are. Uh, and then, inshallah, we are walking through the old city of Jerusalem, of course, uh, and we will go to Al Masjid Al Aqsa Mubarak. We would like to be there in a good time, inshallah, before Salah Jum'a, inshallah, because we would like to visit some places. Uh, uh, inside the Masjid al-Aqsa, like the Dome of the Rock, for example, uh, the Rock, the Batu. We would like to visit also uh, the mosque that it is called Marwani Mosque, uh, underground. Uh, we would like to visit also the old Aqsa Mosque, and we are lucky that today is uh, Masjid al-Buraq. It is opened also today, the place where Rasulullah uh, tied the Buraq. Uh, usually, uh, they don't open it uh, except Jum'a, Friday, because uh, all the the uh, Musallah, I can uh, call it, uh, it, is, it will be open the uh, uh, Salah Jum'ah. And that's why we will uh, visit, inshallah. After we will uh, finish our ziyarah, inshallah, we will uh, go for wudu, inshallah. Uh, I will take you to a very close place to make wudu, inshallah, bi'alameen. And then I will let you go and pray Salah Jum'ah, inshallah, bi'alameen. Uh, again, I will repeat uh, that uh, after uh, finishing Salah Jum'ah, following the Imam, of course, uh, if we do have janazah, will pray for takbir. If no janazah, they will call for Salat Asr, Jama'a Taqdim Qasr. So you will wait a few minutes, uh, one minute, two minutes, Allah Alam, and then you will hear that another Imam he is uh, making iqama for Salat Asr, Jama'a Taqdim for the, the uh, people that they are coming from so far, like you also traveling, or some people from here also coming from so far. You can pray Dua Rak'ah, Jama'a Taqdim Asr, Qasr, Insha'Allah, Bi'alameen. After we'll finish, inshallah, I will tell you where it will be our meeting point uh, so as to go and I will show you today also, inshallah, the wailing wall or the crying wall where the Yehudi they are praying. Uh, I will show you, inshallah, if I do not make a view. And then we are going using our bus, inshallah, through one of the gates, uh, going to, uh, to the restaurant where we're going to take our lunch today, inshallah. After finishing our lunch, inshallah, we are going to Bukit Zaytun, Jabal Zaytun where we're going to visit, inshallah, Maqam at Masjid Salman al-Farisi, radiyallahu anhu. And inshallah, we will cross nearby Maqam, one of the uh, Sufi lady, inshallah, if it will be open, the Maqam, only Maqam, not the Masjid. Uh, one of the Sufi lady, her name is Rabi'atu al-Adawiyya. And then, inshallah, we will finish uh, going to a nice panoramic view where you can take a nice pictures, inshallah, bi'alameen. You can see Jerusalem from so close, inshallah, explaining to you about everything. And now, uh, uh, in few minutes, inshallah, 
in few minutes uh, we will leave the bus. And uh, I would like, uh, usually they are taking the people, to it. it was built there. Uh, uh, the wall of the old city of Jerusalem. Exactly, it was built there, nearby the old one that it was built by the Romans, also 2,000 years ago. And even before, during the Jebusites, uh, also period, during the Jebusites, they are uh, Arabs, Canaanites people also. And one of the names of the city of Jerusalem, it was called Yebus. Yebus is one of the old names of the city of Jerusalem. Okay, Alhamdulillah, we are ready, you see. I love you so much, I don't want you to walk uh, a little bit, so I ask our, our captain to come here uh, to pick us from the hotel and uh, we will leave in Sharpa right now. Uh, are you ready? Bismillah. Jabal 
and he entered the city through the gate where we are going to enter right now. That's why I'm telling my Muslim people we are following the steps of Omar ibn Khattab today, inshallah. And then we will go to the place where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he prayed with the Anbiya, where it was the Mi'raj Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To your back, this is the new city of Jerusalem, and the uh, hotel over there, this is the hotel, the most famous hotel here, yeah? the most expensive hotel, it's called the King David Hotel. Yeah? King David Hotel, it's called the hotel, but it's there. Today, it's all nice, it belongs to the Yahoo. So we will go through this gate here, inshallah, and we will stop me up by the map of the city of Jerusalem. I will explain to you about also the all gates of the city of Jerusalem, inshallah. That means that we do have eight gates around the whole city of Jerusalem, seven open and one sealed. One is closed from the time of Salahuddin al ayyubi I will tell you why it is closed also. And the wall that you can see where we are right now nearby, this is from the Turkish period, uh, from the Ottoman period, from the 16th century, from the time of one of the Muslim Sultan, uh, his name is Sulaiman al Khanun, Sulaiman the Magnificent. Uh, his son, his father was uh, the first Turkish Caliph of Sultan here, Salim al Awwal. That he was here, yeah, one of the greatest uh, Muslim sultan, you know, and admire the Muslim sultan from Turkey. They were working so hard. The Turkish, they have been in this country 400 years, from 1517 till 1917. Yeah. Now, uh, I will let you stand, uh, don't move. This one, this is for the Jewish. In hotels, in restaurants, in uh, their houses, they do have the same like this. Uh, it is called mezuzah. They, when they are coming or they are greeting, they are touching, they are kissing, you know? Kissing, this is the uh, call it mezuzah. It's like a blessing, you know? They have a paper inside them from the Bible, from the Torah. They kiss it, you know, and uh, bless Exactly. Let's go from here. see now we are inside the old city of Jerusalem now you can see we came from the gates meaning that we are in the inner part of the old city of Jerusalem this is the old city of Jerusalem that's surrounded by the wall that was built by the Ottomans the Turkish you know the gate that we entered right now here you see we are here exactly now it is called Jaffa gate in Arabic, we call it Bab al Khalil. Al Khalil, according to what's mentioned in the Quran, what Takhad Allah Ibrahima Khalila, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took Ibrahim as one of his friends, like Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So today, we will go crossing the old city and going to where? Going to this quarter that it is called the Christian quarter. Jerusalem, it is divided into four quarters, like this. The Christian quarter, the Muslim quarter, nearby your hotel is the Herod's Gate. Uh, and you are coming all the time for Salah, coming through this gate, going all the way to the Masjid. This is the Masjid here, you know. Unfortunately, even the Yahudi, they took it, uh, the Masjid here, you know. So we will go through the gate, going to the Christian quarter and the, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Then we are going walking all the way nearby the Masjid, inshallah, bi uh, Now, eight gates. Jaffa Gate, we have a gate that's called Zion Gate, 
We have a gate that's called Dan Gate or Morocco Gate. We have a gate here also that's called the, the Merciful Gate, uh, or we call it Babu Rahma. This is the gate that it was sealed by the uh, Salahuddin Ayyubi. Why it was closed? Because Salahuddin Ayyubi, when he took Jerusalem from the Crusaders, uh, he would like to secure the city from enemy's attack, you know. Because here, the north, some people living here. The west, some people living here. Yeah, south, also people living here. But here, no people living. What we have here, we have Quburan. We have cemetery here. We have the Muslim cemetery, the Jewish cemetery, the Christian cemetery. That's why this is the, uh, so weak here. Uh, so they can enter easy the, uh, the enemies to attack the city of Jerusalem. That's why he sealed the gate, you know. And then we have Lion's Gate, and then we have uh, Herod's Gate, and Damascus Gate, and the new gate. This one, that's called the new gate, it was opened in the 19th century so as to let uh, the tourists coming to the old city, especially the Christian coming so close to the Christian quarter, to the church of the Holy Sepulchre, where we are going uh, right now. Um, but you can see, this is uh, an unusual gate here, you know. We have two gates here, you can see. One that where we came right now, this is the original one, and the other one that it was opened in the 19th century. Why? Uh, one of the uh, Caesar uh, from Germany, the Emperor of Germany, his name is uh, 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 Wilhelm II. Uh, when he came to visit the city of Jerusalem du during the Turkish period, uh, so uh, they opened the gate uh, for him, you know, so as to use his Mercedes uh, to come to the old city of Jerusalem, not walking like us, you know. <laughs> so he came from that gate. You can see if you continue the wall of the old city to the other wall of uh, the old city, so it will be again closed here, you know. But they open it uh, uh, for him, especially so as to let him go to the inner part of the city without walking, you know. Now, uh, again, as I told you before, that we do have four quarters in Jerusalem. And we do have two main roads in Jerusalem. One comes from the north to the south. It is called Cardo. Cardo is from the Cardex, from the heart, you know, the heart of the city. And one comes from the west to the east called Dokumanos. Eh? And that's why you can see that Jerusalem, it is divided today into four quarters, four sections. The, the Christian quarter, the Muslim quarter, the Armenian quarter. And the Armenian, they are Christian, but they are not original from here. They are from Armenia. Armenia it was controlled by Russia. Today they have their independence, you know, the Armenian. And we do have the Jewish quarter nearby the Wailing Wall, where we are going inshallah to visit also the Wailing Wall or the Western Wall or the Crying Wall, where we're gonna visit nearby Al Masjid Al Aqsa. The Wailing Wall we call it also the Wall of Al Burak. Because this is the wall where he tied the Rasulullah Sallam the Buraka and he went to Al Masjid Al Aqsa Al Mubarak. Any question? No, thank you. <laughs> this way. Thank <laughs> you. 
راست راست حرام 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 it is not a shopping center uh, no uh, we have houses we have churches we have uh, uh, shops everything this is the old city during that time uh, during that time the old city it was like a bazaar like the grand bazaar in Turkey. the same because it is turkish it was built by the turkish they, they, still have, they do have same mentality like in Turkey, they did also the same here, they did also the same in Syria, they did the same in, in Egypt also. They have also the uh, Turkish Bazaar also. Okay, we will continue, inshallah. Anybody would like to please? Ladies. <laughs>
holy sepulcher or that's the holy grave of this Islam according to Christian beliefs of course. This one of the most important churches that we will have it in Jerusalem here. And this is part of the Hajj for the Christian all they are coming here because uh, uh, they are coming uh, from so far to visit the place where it was uh, the resurrection of Nabi Isa according to what they believe of course. So uh, Omar Abdul Khattab he came from the same gate we came. It was not built the masjid, of course, you know, or no mosque, you know. It was only the grave. come and protect us from the Persians, you know, and we will uh, uh, let you be like the king of the city of Jerusalem, you know. You will be the owner of the city. We will give you the keys of the city of Jerusalem, you know. But please can come and protect us, you know, because uh, the Persians, they were killing Christians, uh, Jewish also, and even the Muslims, you know, before even building mosques here, you know. So Omar Abdul Khattab, he came. It's a long story. I, I, I assume that all of you, you know the story that he was uh, riding his donkey or his camel, you know. Once uh, uh, he was riding the camel, the other uh, time, you know, his servant was riding the camel and Omar ibn Khattab, you know, was leading. This is the prevalence of uh, Islam and Omar. So when he arrived here, even the priest, you know, Sophronius, he was, uh, he was surprised. Who's Omar? Was Omar, you know, where is Omar, you know? He was uh, taking the horse, Omar Abdul Khattab, and his servant, he was riding the camel or the, the, the horse, you know. Finally, they told Omar Abdul Khattab, the law, and while he was here, Omar Abdul Khattab, he took the keys of the city of Jerusalem from the priest, his name is Sahron, you know. And during that time, it was uh, Salah, Salah Duhur or Asr, you know. So the, it was no masjid, no mosque here. So the priest of Korea invited Omar Abdul Khattab to pray inside the church because the church it was built for century by the uh, Queen Helena, mother of Constantine during that time, during the Byzantine period. So Omar Abdul Khattab refused to pray inside the church. So the priest was telling him why. 
This is the heart of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can pray inside and you are a Muslim and you believe in Allah. He say, yes, I can pray inside. But if I will pray inside, so you will have a big conflict here with the Muslims in the future. Because the Muslims, they will come to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem, they will follow Umar ibn Khattab, they will pray inside the chair. That's why better not to pray, you know. How wise Umar ibn Khattab, you know. So he refused to pray, and he prayed exactly in front of the church. You can see that we don't have not yet Umar ibn Khattab. And from that time, you know, the, uh, the relation between the uh, people living here, you know, they do have a great harmony between uh, both of uh, the Christians and the Muslims because they are from uh, this uh, uh, city since a long time, of course. You know. Now, the importance of the, uh, the church here, the, uh, according to Christian beliefs, of course, uh, that Umar, uh, Nabi Isa, alayhi salam, he was captured, he was arrested in Bukhet Zaytun, in a church that's called the, the Church of Gethsemane according to their belief that he was arrested by the Roman during that time and he was betrayed by a person, his name is Judah, the Iscariot, you know. So they arrested Umar Isa alayhi salam and they took him for the, to the prison for one night. The second day it was Friday, they call it the Holy Friday, the Christian. Uh, they took uh, Isa alayhi salam from the prison to the governor of the city of Jerusalem, the Roman, his name is Binchos Pilate. Uh, Pinchos Pilots, and uh, during that time they told the Pinchos Pilots uh, uh, he is claiming that he is the king of the Jews, you have to kill him, you have to crucify him. Finally, he cannot say no because he is from Bani Israel. He is from Bani Israel, Nabi Isa, alayhi salam, you know. And finally, uh, they took him to the governor uh, inside one of the fortresses where he was living, the king during that time. It is called Antonia Fortress. You know. And from there, they started the Christian procession. Till today, they are doing, they call it Way of the Cross, the Via Dolorosa. The Way of the Cross, it is 14 stations. And the Christians, they are coming for Hajj, they are doing the same, you know. Like, like us, you know, while we are going for Umrah. For example, we are going Asai, by the Safa, or Marwa. Same, the Christians, they are doing the same during the Hajj, you know. What they are doing, 14 stations. In each station, something happened to Nabi Isa, alayhi salam. The first station where he was condemned to death, Nabi Isa, alayhi salam. The second station, the flagellation station, and they gave him the crown and the cross, like that one, you know, but bigger, they say, you know. The third station where he was carrying the cross and he fall down. Mm -hmm. The falling of Isa, alayhi salam, according to Christian beliefs. The fourth station where he met Maryam alayhi salam, his mother. The fifth station where he was going to fall down, but the person, his name is Simon from Cyrene. Cyrene is Libya today, where he helped him to carry the cross. Sixth station where he met a lady, her name is Veronica. And you hear the name Veronica everywhere, you know. But it, what is the meaning of Veronica? Veronica means Vero Ikona. In, in Aramic language, Vero Ikona is the truth image of Isa. Why? Because she was washing the face of Isa and it was printed the image of Isa at the handkerchief of the lady. And that's why they call her Vero Ikona, Veronica, the truth image of Isa. Seventh station where he falls for the second time. Eighth station where he met the ladies of Jerusalem. Nine station falling for the third time. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, it was here. Station number 10 at that dome, it's closed, uh, where they took the garment of Isa alayhi salam and they gave him the crucifixion clothes, the purple one. 11, station number 11, inside the church we have a mountain, they call it Mount Calvary, Golgotha, Gabata, where he was nailed on the cross. Uh, 12 station where he was crucified and he died. 13 station, we have a, a stone where they anointed the body of Isa. They cleaned the body of Isa and they robbed him and they took him to the last station, 14 station, is Quburan Nabi Isa salam, the holy sepulcher, according to Christian beliefs. Listen well, according to Christian beliefs, we respect all religion, but in the Quran it is mentioned, very important to know that because this is against our aqidah. In the Quran it is mentioned, 
بعد أعوذ بالله من الشراشيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما قتلوه وما صلبوه ولكن شبه لهم according to what we believe they never killed him they never crucified him a person look like Nabi عليه السلام and Allah سبحانه وتعالى lifted him up to the second sky so he is still alive Nabi Isa according to our belief you know even one old lady she went to Rasulullah عليه السلام والسلام and she was asking Rasulullah am I going to Jenna she would like to see if she's going to Jenna or not no Rasulullah so he was joking with her, he was telling her, no old people going to Al-Jannah. <laughs> so she was crying, you know. Rasulullah was telling her, no old people going to Al-Jannah. Finally, they told her, no old people, they're going to be in Al-Jannah. All people, they're going to be all the same age of Nabi Isa, while he was lifted up to the second sky, 33 years old. So this is the story. And the Christian till today, they are renting a cross and coming, walking all the way from the first station. They are leaving the, the cross outside of the church, you know. Now, we have something amazing here, you know. From the 13th century, they were fighting the Christians in between th uh, themselves, you know, because we have Christian, Catholic, Armenian, Greek Orthodox, uh, Coptic, Assyrian, Ethiopian, and each one to have his own section, you know. They were fighting th since a long time, 13th century, 12th century, who's opening the church, who's closing the church, to be the owner, you know. And finally, they do have a status quo, uh, an agreement, you know, that two Muslim families from Jerusalem, till today, they are opening and closing the church, so not to fight in between themselves. Any question? No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, anyway, anybody would like to go to see inside, to the left side, inside, to the left, is the Quburan. You will see only from outside, there is, there is a queue. Only can take a look, take pictures, can.
العهدة العمرية العهدة العمرية the Treaty of Omar ibn Khattab. What was written? By the way, this letter they are teaching in universities in Europe. By the way, it is it was written that letter. هذا ما أعطى عبد الله عمر أمير المؤمنين إلى بي إلى أهل بيت إليا. This is what he gave, what he wrote, Omar ibn Khattab to the people of Elia, Jerusalem. You know. That Christian can live here safely. Nobody will bother them. Nobody will destroy their crosses. Nobody will they will destroy their, their churches, you know. They can live peacefully under the control of the Muslim, but they have to be what? Jizya. Jizya. Jizya is taxes. Ah. But it is allowed for Christian, but for thieves, for thieves and Jewish, it is not allowed to live. So he did not allow for Jewish to live in Jerusalem. So go out, he told them, you know, because they never fulfilled their promises, you know, like the Christians. And that's why Omar Abu Khattab wrote the letter. We do have a frame inside. Uh, I will show you uh, the, the letter, inshallah. And it was uh, signed by who testified about the letter that it was written uh, 15 Hijri. 636 by Omar ibn Khattab, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Khalid ibn Walid, Muawiyah ibn Amr ibn al-As. Those are great leaders that they were with Omar ibn Khattab here in 636. You see Omar, how wise Omar. It is a lot for Christians, it is not a lot for Jews to live here. Because they know that he knows the Jews said they will never fulfill their promises. You know? So we have problems with the Jews since a long time. Okay, I think that we are all here. One more. One more. One more. Husband. Oh, he is coming. Anyway, I'm going to count you while we are going.
This is the Wailing Wall Observation Point.
Yaudin ni. Yaudi. Ini Yaudi ni. Ni awak ni mau Yaudi ni. Nampak ni mana Yaudi. It is not the black dome, you know. No, this is part of Al Masjid Al Aqsa. Aqsa, it is 144,000 meters square. This is all Aqsa. Wherever you pray, you are in Al Masjid Al Aqsa. And today you will see that Muslims they will pray here, they will pray here, they will pray inside the musalla, where they will pray inside the dome of the rock. Everywhere it is Aqsa. So we don't have two names, we have only one name. In the Quran it is mentioned. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Subhanalladhi asra bi'abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa. Alladhi barakna hawlahu linuriyahu min ayatina innahu huwa al-sami' al-basir. I raised one question first day. Why Mi'raj Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa sallam it was from here? It was not from Makkah Madinah. That's right? Yep. Yeah. And you? No, the answer. I gave you two days, you know. <laughs> Nobody Google. No? no. Even Why? maybe in Google you cannot Why? find it. Uh, uh, Why? For many reasons. Huh. One of the important reasons that Rasulullah wasalam, during the, uh, the year of, uh, or the night of Isra and Miraj, or the year of Isra and Miraj, he was so sad. Hmm. Rasulullah wasalam, he lost two of his beloved people, you know, the wife and the uncle Abu Talib, you know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot see Muhammad sallallahu wasalam, so sad. So he asked him to come by the Burak uh, to Baytul Majid to forget his sadness, to tell him that you are my beloved Nabi, you are my last prophet, you know. And here, where he was praying Rasulullah with 124,000 prophets. If I will pray with 10 people, you know, I will like like this, you know. What about 124,000 prophets from the time of Adam till the time of Nabi Isa alayhi salam? All of them, they followed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, meaning that in Nadina, in Allah, al-Islam, you know. So they are, they are all Muslims. So why he was praying here? Because here, according to our uh, hadith, Rasulullah uh, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, aqrab bawabatin ila sama the closest gate to Sidratul Muntaha is here. This is one of the reasons. The closest gate to Sidratul Muntaha is where it was Mi'raj Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from here, you know. So you are now nearby Sidratul Muntaha, you know. Mi'raj Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The other reason, as I told you before, that uh, to tell the people that Muhammad is the last prophet, you know, and he will be the imam of all the anbiya, you know. This is one of the reasons, you know. According to what we believe, you know, that this is the second mosque and the first Qibla. Our Qibla, it was yeah. here, yeah. like yeah. this. Muslims, they were praying like this to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. You don't know where. Here, yeah. this is Aqsa. Yeah. You see that minaret? Yeah. Also, it is part of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. But when Rasulullah, والسلام, he returned back again to Mecca and then to Medina Munawwara, he loved so much Kaaba, Rasulullah, where he was born. And the first mosque it was built on earth is Kaaba, you know, Al-Masjid Al-Haram. So while he was praying there, 
uh, he was praying to Aksa <coughs> for uh, he loves so much Kaaba, so he would like to pray to the other side, you know. <laughs> so Allah, he knows what he's doing, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that's why. Salam alaikum, habibi. So uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala was telling Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. بعد أعوذ بالله من الشرجين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد نرى تقلب وجه وجهك في السماء. We can see that you are looking for the other qibla. We will give you the qibla that you you wish. And that's why while he was praying Dhuhr and some ulama they say Asar, he changed the qibla to Kaaba. And that's why in Al Madina Al Munawwara we do have two a masjid that's called Masjid Al Qibla Tain. Do a qibla because he was praying to Aksa and then it was changed to. Kaaba, and that's why we have Masjid Al Qibla Tain, uh, where we are praying today. Is our Qibla is Kaaba. Now inside the compound of Al Masjid Al Aqsa Al Mubarak, we have many, many musalla. I can say within the compound of Al Masjid Al Aqsa Al Mubarak, we have the Dome of the Rock, where we do have the Batu, the Rock, where we are going right now. We do have the Bawa underground, Al Masjid Al Marwani. We do have underground Masjid Al Aqsa Al Qadim. We do have Al Qibali Mosque, the Black Dome, and over there we do have a small musalla that's called Masjid Al Burak Al Sharif. Uh, we will visit, inshallah, I mean, first this masjid before it will be not allowed for men to visit because after a while it will be only for ladies. Uh, our salah today, inshallah, it will be here for men. You can pray anywhere. Ladies, they will pray at that place. After finishing, inshallah, our visit, we will go for wudu, inshallah, and then. Ladies, they will pray here, and men, they will be, pray everywhere. Uh, as I told you before, after Salat Juma, following the Imam, inshallah, we will wait. If there are Salat Janaza, we will pray to, uh, for Takbir. If there is no Salat Janaza, we will follow the other Imam. He will pray to Waraka, Asr, Jamia Taqdeen, Qasar. After finishing all our Salat, our meeting point it will be on the other side of the top of the rock. We have the small dome. Also, this is the mother, the baby. You know, over there it will be our meeting point, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. All okay? Okay. So let's go and visit. We will not, please. We don't have time, you know. Yeah. In the one hour more, less, will be at then Juma, Duhur. So we will visit, inshallah, everywhere before Salah, inshallah. Okay. And then he came outside. I don't know who asked me about also where he prayed with the Anbiya. Now listen, we don't know exactly the right place. Nobody knows, of course, you know. But according to our ulama, to the west south of the road, to the west south of the road, where he prayed with 124,000 Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then after that he prayed with all the Anbiya, he came back again to the same rock at the head of the rock, at the edge of the rock, 
where it was Mi'raj Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Sidratul Muntaha. Isra and Mi'raj. Isra is from Mecca, Mi'raj is from Jerusalem. The ascension of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why here, this is the place, traditionally place. Do not believe me, because I will not tell you 100%. The traditional place where is the Bakati Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will go now to the cave. Just follow me. After we will finish visiting the cave where he was praying Rasulullah, then we will come back again. You can touch it and then we go out again to visit them some other place. I promise you today, after finishing everything, inshallah, in Jerusalem, you will go back to the hotel and then you can come before Maghrib. You can pray Maghrib here. It will be empty. You can visit it. and then we are moving out inshallah go to Lena, 
عن عبادته صلى الله عليه وسلم كيف عرفت هذه العباده؟ الله عز وجل الذي يراك حين تقوم وتقلبك في الساجدين. نحن لم نعلم الله عز وجل اخبرنا وايضا الله عز وجل يكف علينا من انباء الرسل قصها عن الحبيب صلى الله عليه وسلم. تثبيت انه صلى الله عليه وسلم تثنية لنفسه وايضا فيها نور للصحابة حتى يصبروا حتى يتحملوا لانه يقدر يسلم للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم هذا 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 العزم وهذه الهمم من الله عز وجل صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه من دروس الانبياء فما تسلم من حكمة قومه وما تسلم من حكمة السلام ومحاربة احراج سيدنا ابراهيم بالصبيان عليه السلام بدونها وما فعله مع محمد والفتنة في السجن وما قصد موسى بعد العون عليه السلام الى موسى وجنوده واياده لا يحتفظ الا تكفيدا للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بعد تحديد قومه وايمانه هذه القصص هي للتوحيد عن قلب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم واكمال الطاعه على قلبه هذه تجيره بان نفع عباده المؤمنين الله عز وجل يقول وكلا نقص عليك من انباء
his name is Ubadah ibn Samit. And the other one, his name is Shaddad ibn Aws al Ansari. Both of them they are from Al Madinah Munawwara. But uh, they came and they lived in Palestine in a city near Beirut, Ramla called. And then they came to Jerusalem and they are buried here, both of them. Uh, so we have.
Nanti kita buat lah Kau buat baju, baju kurun tak dengan kain samping pun Pongkok Ha? Apa tu kau buat kain samping dengan apa? Macam apa? Pirambi punya, punya lipat Chairs can use it. Yeah. If you want to to sit down using the carpet, why not? And uh, it's warm here. Yeah, it's not cold. Because of the type of the construction, it's the place where we are. It is an old construction, not a modern one. So in summer time, it's cool here because the the roof is like so high. And the, uh, the building, you know, the stone, that we are using all kinds of stones here, not like uh, other countries. We do have a good uh, uh, stones in this country. We have uh, limestone, we have basalt stone, we have chalk stones, we have dolomite stones. Uh, and this is good, you know, that's why you can see everywhere you go, only stones here, you know. Except here, not the stone, you know. <laughs> okay, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي. And the place where we are here, first of all, the mountain where we are, the village where we are, it is called the Jabal Zaytun, Mount of Olives. Why? Because we have a lot of olive trees. And this is the highest mountain in Jerusalem, 775 meters above sea level where we are. Where, where we have been in Hebron, and the uh, Halhul, it's uh, over than 900 meters uh, above sea level. So 
in winter time it's so cold over there. But for you now it is cold, you know, I know that, you know. For us, no, it's good still, good weather, you know, for us, you know. So the, the mountain where we are here, do have a maqam. Again, it is not the grave, that's the Quran. It is maqam, Nabiullah, uh, maqam, Sahaba Rasulullah, Salman al-Farisi, radiallahu anhu. Now, uh, the question is uh, that we do have thousands of Sahaba, thousands of the companions of Rasulullah but we don't have for all of them maqam, except some of them. Why? Because they did something extraordinary in Islam. They did something that we, uh, till today, we are learning from them. They, they gave us a good lesson. That's why we do have the maqam of Salman al-Fari. Salman do have the title, Al-Bahithu an al What is the meaning? al looking for the truth. He was looking all the time for the truth. Salman, first of all, he was from a rich family. He is from Iran. That's why his name is what? Pharisee. Pharisee is Iran, Persian. And Salman, he was not a Muslim. Salman, he was a Majusi. Majusi meaning that he was worshipping fire. the fire. His god was the fire. And not only this, while he was also worshipping the fire, his god, he was serving the fire, Khadimullah, subhanAllah. But he was an intellectual man. One day he met a priest, Christian priest, and he was talking with the Christian priest about his religion, about Christianity. So the priest was telling him about the Isa alayhi salam, about al Injil, about the churches, about the miracles of the Isa alayhi salam. So Salman, he was thinking, Wallahi, this is better than uh, uh, worshipping the fire, you know. At least they do have uh, uh, a book that's called an Injil, you know. And they have also Nabi, or, or what they call it, you know, God, astaghfirullah Isa alayhi salam. But the Christian priest, he told him, if you know, if you want to know about Christianity, you have to go to Syria or to Palestine. This is where it was started that Christianity here in this country and in Syria also. But here, more. So he left him. After, after a while, you know, after a few weeks, few months, uh, Salman was thinking about what he was telling him, the bishop or the priest, you know. And he decided uh, to leave his home. Because subhanAllah, it was something missing in his heart. You know, looking for the truth. Uh, so he decided to leave his money, his Mercedes, uh, everything. Yeah. You see, looking for the truth is not easy. You know. And he left his home without taking a permission even from his father. You know. And his father, he was all the time afraid about him. Yeah. He's from a small village in Iran called Jay. And he went to Syria. While he was in Syria, he met the priest. And the priest invited him to the church. And he was telling him about also the, uh, the Bible, the uh, Injil, and all the miracles of Rabbi Isa salam. So he convinced him to convert to a Christian. And he converted to a Christian. He was a real Christian, very religious in Christianity even. Man. And he was serving the church. Even while he was Christian, he was so religious, he was serving the church, Khadimul Kanisa. But one day, subhanAllah, he was inside the church early morning, like Tahajjud, alone. He was praying inside the church, and suddenly he saw the priest of the church, the person that is in charge of the church, he was stealing the donation from the church. Oh. Are you laughing? No. Don't laugh. Because our Muslims today, they are doing the same in our mosques. <laughs> Makes me sad, but this is what's happening in our Muslim countries, you know. So he was so sad. He was so sad. And he decided to leave the church. He left the church, but they advised him, you know, from one person to another person. Finally, they advised him to go to a mountain in Syria. At that mountain, there is a monastery and 
also a priest, but he is an old man and a good man. Because we do have still some Christian, they are good people also, you know. And they believe in Allah like us, you know. And even in the, in the, in the Bible, the original one, not what they have today. But the, what they have today is not the original Bible, by the way. This is the interpretation. But the original one, they don't have it. It is written in the original Bible, Al-Injil, that there is a Nabi, after Nabi Isa his name is Imam Muhammad وسلم, or Ahmad. According to what's mentioned in the Bible, وسياتي من بعد رسول اسمه Ahmad. A prophet, he will come after Nabi Isa, his name is Ahmad وسلم, Muhammad وسلم. So he went to the, uh, to the monastery and he met the priest and he told the priest, listen, my story is really sad. And I was so sad, you know. Please, can you advise me before you die what to do? So the priest, he told him, listen, there is a new prophet in Al Jazeera Al Arabiya, in Saudi. Saudi, it was not called Saudi, it was called Al Hijaz. And this Nabi, his name is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know. But this Nabi do have three, three signs that is Nabi Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Very good. See, looking for the truth. The first sign, according to the hadith, he is living between two mountains. Makkah Madinah between mountains. Correct? The second sign, this Nabi, he told him, he is not eating from the sadaqah. He is eating only from the hadiyah. He is not accepting the sadaqah, he accepts the hadiyah. Okay? And the third sign, in between his shoulders, the sign of the prophecy, Khatmun Nubuwa, Nabi Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was so happy. He left everything and he went looking for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. While he was traveling, they kidnapped him and they sold him as a slave. And who bought him? One Yahudi. So we have problem with Yahudi since a long time, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so when he entered the area of Al Hijaz, Saudi, he saw the mountain. But he's not convinced, to, uh, not yet, that this is the place, you know. Because in Iran, they have mountains, you know. <laughs> so he was looking for something else. One day while he was working with the Yehudi, climbing a Kuruma tree, a friend of the Yehudi came telling his master <coughs> that there is a man sitting over there and he is talking about Islam, Quran. So he was so happy, Salman. So he left uh, the place after finishing his job and he took with him Tamar, Kurma. And he went to Rasulullah. He was sitting like this with the Sahaba. And he went to Rasulullah telling him, this is Sadaqah. He wants to see if he will take the, accept the Sadaqah or not, you know. He's not a, a stupid, he's intelligent, you know, Salman. So Rasulullah, how polite Rasulullah, wasalam, he took it from him and he gave the Sahaba. He never ate, you know. If I will give any king today kurma, he will kill me, you know. <laughs> now, they need the... Uh, Allahu Alam. So he recognized, he realized that he is not accepting the sadaqah. The second time he took again kurma and he told him this is hadiyah. So he took it and he ate and he gave the sahaba. That's why we are following the sunnah. This is sunnah. What is the sunnah? The sunnah is ma warda an rasul min qawl aw fa'al aw amal aw taqrir aw sifa. Everything that he did Rasulullah is sunnah. How he was praying, this is sunnah. How he was eating, this is sunnah. And this is sunnah that we accept hadiyah. If my brother is uh, giving me iPhone 12, you know, hadiyah, I will accept it, you know. Mm. Because it's hadiyah following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know. Now the third sign, not easy. Here, one day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was burying one of the Sahaba in the Muslim cemetery. So Salman, see Salman looking for the truth. He went looking for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah, he realized that he is looking for the sign. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَى إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Allah can tell him everything, you know. So what he did, Rasulullah, he was wearing like, uh, you know, ihram, Rasulullah So he laid down and he showed the Salman the sign, قَتْمُ النُّبُوَةِ Nabi Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was so happy. And he went to Rasulullah and he was telling him, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa annaka Rasulullah and you are Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he became a Muslim, a real Muslim. This is Salman al Farisiyah. Now, looking for the truth, brothers and sisters, 
All the Arab countries, the Muslim countries, you know, believe me, they are not looking for the truth. You are looking for the truth. You are coming from so far because of al masjid al aqsa not because of Hisham. That's why you are coming from so far. You left your family because of al masjid al aqsa because you love Rasulullah wasalam. So you are looking for the truth. You spend your money, your time, family to be in al masjid al aqsa al-Mubarak. There is a hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They asked Rasulullah, gave us fatwa about Aqsa. So he told them, اِئْتُوهُ فَصَلُّوا فِيهِ فَإِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ فِيهِ بِخَمْسِ مِنَةِ رَكَعَ عَمَّنْ سِوَاهِ Go and pray. It is an order from Rasulullah. If you cannot go there, because every one raka is 500 raka, and the other hadith is 1,000. They asked Rasulullah, okay, but we are from, in, from Singapore so far. We cannot go, we don't have money, what we can do? And we would like to go there. We love Aqsa, we love the place where it was Mi'raj Rasulullah What we can do? So he told him, if you cannot go there, you can send olive oil. Olive oil, why olive oil? During that time, they were lightening the mosque by using olive oil. Today we don't have electricity. I'm telling you, we don't need your olive oil. You are the olive oil. By coming from Singapore, you are lightening Al Masjid Al Aqsa Mubarak. By coming from Singapore, everybody is happy for you. Even you are happy. Even your families, they are jealous from you. Because you are in Al Masjid Al Aqsa Mubarak. And millions of our Muslims, they are dreaming to come here to pray half a rak'ah. Alhamdulillah. You are coming from so far. Al Aqsa Ibn Jama'ah. Salman, he was here. I told you before, he was with the Umar Abu Khattab and 4,000 Sahaba. We remember Salman al Farisi when he left Mecca to Medina, Hijra al Nabawiyya. He left with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When they left Mecca to Medina, the people in Medina they were waiting for Rasulullah and his Sahaba. So they told Rasulullah, Salman, he's from our family. We love him so much. We will share him everything our food, our money, everything. And people from Mecca they say, no way. He came with us, we will share him everything. He's from our family, we love him so much. Subhanallah. Inna ikhwa. But finally, Rasulullah <coughs> was telling both of them, Salmanu minna al al bayt. Ya Allah. He considered Salman that he's from the house of Nabiullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he loved him so much, you know. Salman, he was fighting all the time with Rasulullah If you remember, Ma'arakatul Khanda. Yes. Or Ma'arakatul Ahzab, we call it, you know. It was a critical time for Rasulullah at that uh, battle, you know. So he was thinking what to do, what to do. They ate even the leaf of the trees during that time, you know. And the dry, uh, also uh, uh, bread, you know. So finally, Salman, he went to Rasulullah, asking Rasulullah, do you have any advice from Allah? I cannot say anything. But if you want my mashura, my advice, I can't tell you what to do. Very smart, very intelligent. He told him, yes, you can tell him what to do. So he advised him to build around the city what? Al-Khanda. Al-Khanda. And because of the advice of Salman al-Farsi, they win the battle of Ma'arakat al-Khanda or Ma'arakat al -Ahzab. This is Salman al-Farsi. He was a wali in Iraq. Now, one lot of my Muslim people from Singapore, from everywhere, they are asking me how old he was while he died, you know. I don't know from where they have this number. They are telling me 250 years, 303 years, you know. <laughs> Not correct. Not correct, you know. During that time, Rasulullah <laughs> told us the hadith, A'mara ummati bayna sittina wa sab'in. The ages of my ummah between 60s and 70s, you know. He died while he was 81 years old, Salman al Farisi. This is Salman al Farisi. That's why we do have maqam and masjid Salman al Farisi because he was here, you know, to remind us, you know, looking for the truth, to remind us that uh, he was one of the best leaders in Islam also that he was all the time fighting with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, all of you, you will be in Al-Jannah with Salman al-Farisi, inshallah. And you will be with all the
الأنبياء إن شاء الله أن تقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and إن شاء الله بعد أمين you will listen to the Quran إن شاء الله from the voice of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم in our Jannah إن شاء الله بعد أمين and we will be neighbors إن شاء الله I will be with you إن شاء الله بعد أمين in our Jannah إن شاء الله بعد أمين and you will eat also kurma and also dalima in our Jannah إن شاء الله بعد أمين because it is mentioned the Quran about the dalima and the kurma also but سبحان الله do not think that the dalima that we're gonna eat it in Al Jannah the same like here. <laughs> totally different. Yes, According to our Quran. <laughs> 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 Inshallah, we will eat it in Al Jannah. Yes, 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 we will eat it where is he actually buried? Oh, oh, according to our ulama, that he was buried in Iraq. Okay. Because he was wali in Iraq during the time of Umar ibn Khattab. This is what uh, uh, our ulama is telling us. You know. uh, any other question? After 3 o'clock, it will be extra the question. <laughs> okay, can take pictures if you want. And then, inshallah, we are going back to our bus. And then, inshallah, we are to the hotel, not so far from here, the hotel, so you can go to your rooms if you want to. Rabbi Adawiyah, it is only maqam, and they don't open it, unfortunately, every time, you know. Talking about Rabbi Adawiyah, Rabbi Adawiyah, she is from Iraq, and she is the first Sufi lady in Islam. And to have two versions about Rabbi Adawiyah, one Egyptian film talking about Rabbi that she was a bad lady, she was a dancer and a singer. This is what we don't believe. And the other is that she's a very religious lady. You know. Her name is Rabia. One, two, three, four. She was number four in her family. That's why they call her Rabia. And uh, she, uh, she, was, uh, uh, she refused to get married. She was so beautiful lady. Uh, she was living during the time of uh, Al-Hassan al-Basri also. And uh, she refused to get uh, married. Why? Because she said, if I will get married, I will lose time uh, to take care of the husband and uh, uh, the house and cleaning. Uh, because she was, she's the one that she fall in loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She came here for a while uh, and then she returned back. She came here to be so close to the place where it was Mi'raj Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because she realized that this is the place where also the closest place to Sidratul Munta. But we don't have a Quburan here. If you go to Egypt, they have a maqam for her. If you go to Lebanon, they have a maqam for her. If you go to many places, they do have a maqam, not only for Rabi'ah, for many, many also Sahaba. You know? Rabi'ah al-Adawiyah, we do have till today songs written by Rabbi al you know, that uh, she's the one that uh, uh, she fall in loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know. By the way, I would like to be honest with you. I'm so strict. Now, maqam for us as a Muslim, it is not the big deal. Okay? Because we are not believing in maqams, we don't believe in Quran, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes we are trying to, to show our Muslim people, you know, like Salman al Farisi. Salman, we can learn a lot of things from him, you know. Rabbi al Adawiyah, you know, she's a Sufi lady. Okay, we respect her, but uh, uh, if you are asking me, I'm against a lot of things, you know, of the Sufi, you know. Because when she is uh, not getting marriage, this is not in Islam, you know. Yes. Rasulullah yes. he was telling her, uh, telling us, you know, لا رهبانية في الإسلام Meaning that uh, no people living, uh, you know, without getting married like the Christians, the monks. The monks yeah. mm -hmm. Because there is hadith Rasulullah telling us, تناكحوا تكاثروا فإني مباهم بكم الأمم يوم القيامة Correct, brother? What is the meaning of tanakaho? You have to get marriage and you will have a lot of baby. Yawm al Qiyamah will say, This is my ummah. A lot of people, you know. He will be proud of us, you know. So, maqams, we do have some maqams, it's bid'ah. Understand?